and we are back. What's going on, man? You know what, man? Nothing much. Once again, folks, I am Baron J67. And I am T Jones. Back. We're back with another episode. This is 18. I know, man. Is it? You Jesus. Know, man, you know what's crazy? Um, I really I know I was like, oh, we can do it once a month or twice <laughs> a month. But now we're getting into the serious flow of once a week. And um, I, I, man, I really, I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's such a. I know I am. Uh, we're getting subscribers. Uh, we're we're slowly creeping up, and I'm so thankful for you guys, man. It, it yeah, um, hey, without them, we're we're not we're, here, man. Man, or we're just talking out to space and whatever aliens, which and we would do anyway, because we. We like the space conversation. Hell yeah, man. I, You know what? Let, I'm going to jump on that right now. First and foremost, it's a numbers game. That is the most egotistical thing you can do is to think that we are the only beings in this whole wide universe. Yeah. It, it, that would be boring. Okay. I forgot the, I forgot the scientist's name or the philosopher's name. Mm-hmm. I wish I knew it and I'll find it. But his quote was either we are alone in the universe or we are not. Both are equally scary. Yeah, of course. Like either one. This is it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like, like this is it. Like both are pretty damn scary. You know, Ooh, we should go down. Like, Oh, that's what we should do. Okay, we should talk about like crazy conspiracy theories. I'm mm-hmm. so down for that. So I would, I, I would. We we had a, and I won't do this again. I I need a refresh rate on conspiracy theory conversation. We had a conversation talking about what if we were like a simulation, like a robot, like a computer, like mm. we just compared, our, we compared the human race to like computers and and we went through this big ass rabbit hole about like being a simulation to like the ultimate like form type deal okay and that was like a 45 minute straight conversation with my eyes just bulging out of my head and i said yo i need a refresh rate that was like three weeks ago i needed three weeks to to because i had a headache after that conversation because it was so much the process but conspiracy I love conspiracy theories, and I always say this. Excuse me. You can't tell them that they're wrong, and you can't tell them that they're right either. Sure. So it's the it's the conversation sure. just it's like having any other conversation. So and, and you know, I love opinion based. Oh yeah. Like the yeah. one thing I love with conspiracy theories is um not even necessarily yeah, we'll we'll stick with conspiracy theories. I love going against like super religious people about them because because the 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 first point i make is well didn't your creator create everything yeah like i always tell people i'm like your creator created everything Mm -hmm. so here it is if we could use the bible for example because that's what i grew up around um so with the bible the christian bible i'm talking like there's one bible that rules them all the christian bible um (laughs) king james version um or the new king james version Okay. I'm not even going to continue down that road, but yeah, no, you can, you have everything from giants, monsters, dragons coming out of lakes of fire. You have super strong ass beings. Yeah. Superhuman beings. Uh, you have people, you have people who aren't people. They are God incarnate who die and then come back. And then you have, um, you got people who talk to bushes. Like it, it just, they say I actually read this before that the best Marvel, the best superhero <coughs> characters come out of the Bible. Like you, you get like you think about everybody with all their superpowers. Wasn't it Moses turning uh, objects into animals? Like <laughs> he was turning his staff into snake. Like the dude was doing yeah. some dope stuff, causing plagues. He <laughs> single handedly <laughs> bringing down this- the. <laughs> <laughs> this is stupid, this, but this is exactly why I love Greek mythology. Ah, got you. Because those stories, or I mean, and like some people believe that to be like the true religion, the true way, yeah. And um, 
the reason why those are so intriguing to me because it as like a as a nerd watching superheroes do superhero type shit half the shit sound like superhero type type yeah. shit <laughs> so so wrapping it back up because i know i'm good for going off topic of the course. whole point of that was is that if you can wholeheartedly believe that why is it so hard to believe that the universe there, is out there with living beings? Yeah, like there's other stuff out there. There's yeah. other creatures. There's other things that breathe, that communicate. Exactly. Like it, it's it's hard to it, it's really hard to like I don't understand why people have such a hard time grasping that. But I actually take that back. I do know why because the mo uh, and I'm tooting my own horn here. The moment you agree to that, like, okay, let's paint the scenario. Uh, a Martian or what, whatever you want to call him, another being um, who's articulate and all of a sudden learns English, comes down to Earth, says, I want to speak to the leader of the free world, which is Donald Trump right now. And then he goes and stands next to Trump and he was like, I am your creator. And then he <laughs> presses a button and then another human pops up. That would immediately crush everything we thought. Every, everything dies. At that everything moment, dies. At that moment. Every the way we live, what mm -hmm. like we eat, how we go about life, everything. <laughs> the, our everything history, world, our yeah, history, history, everything is erased. We start over at that point. But let me, but let me tell you, and that starting over, that that fear of starting over is actually our biggest hindrance when it comes to advancement in mm -hmm. my opinion i truly believe and this still is along the lines of conspiracy theories i truly believe that mind-blowing life-altering um uh, fact-changing knowledge we never really leave ourselves completely open to as a society yeah of mm -hmm. course the science world will you know that's you know but as a society we we're so grounded in what we consider facts that something that comes and tells us, Hey, what you guys thought was right for the last 3000 years is absolutely wrong. Mm -hmm. So all your degrees, all your, oh, it don't mean nothing because you know, nothing. Yeah. We, we would rather hold on to the lie to keep the status quo than to follow adjust. what is true than to adjust to what's true. Yeah. yeah, but and that's but that's because this is why, I mean, and we won't go too deep into this, but <laughs> like this is why religion is so. It's it's kind of odd to me mm. that you can tell this person that they're wrong, but you're right. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And this is why, like I said, we won't go that. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Right. <clears throat> but like, you can't do that. Yeah, like you, you're just telling me I'm wrong because you're right. Yeah. That's it. That's all you stand by. That's all you have to stand on, which is ignorant of of the other person of that person saying that. So, I mean, with me, I'm open minded to everything. I grew up. Oh yeah, I grew up in the um in the church, and I had questions, and that was that. So didn't it make people mad? Yeah, it made people mad because these these were questions like. It was almost like you weren't supposed to ask this. It, because it almost knocks the bottom out of everything. Yeah. Like my one question, and the, I'm going to keep this in line and say this is still a conspiracy theory because it's like a going against like wide mainstream belief. Uh, but how is it that a lot of the traits that are, uh, and we're going deep into this. I know we say we're not. But this is it. We're gonna jump back on topic after this. Say what you say. Okay. So a lot of the same traits that we put onto our almighty being, God of War, jealous God, this and that, those mm -hmm. are in turn our deadly sins. How? <laughs> like, like, but I'll leave it at that. And yeah. but first and foremost creator created everything so <laughs> th there's no way do you know how boring and scary that would be if we're it that'd be trash i i want yeah, i would say that i can i can i can understand that i mean 
we have no control over that. So if we were by ourselves, shit, you just got to play the hands that you were dealt. But to always think like, yo, there's something else out there. Ooh, okay. I got another question. What universe, like what man-made version of of space and intergalactic relationships would you want to like? Do you imagine space to be? Like, I want to be where Jaren's from. Oh, you stupid! <laughs> Wherever he's from, that's where I want this universe to be. That one. He said, "Universe five. Jaren. Goku, Goku only run because of the writer. He only won because of the writers. The writers. Oh my I'm god! I'm just saying, Jaren is. That's where you want to be at. <laughs> he punch you with his eyes. I want that. That's piercing spirits. Nah, but... Nah, but uh, I mean, enough of that. Let's let's get back on topic. Um, yeah, conspiracy theory. This, well, no, this, first let me tell you mine. You got to say yours. You said Jiren. Okay, okay, you want Jiren's right, yeah. universe. Me, I want uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That's what I picture space being. That we're like right. some giant reality show for the rest of the universe. And uh, I, I would be scared. <laughs> like it just wouldn't that Can be? Can you imagine somebody flicking through your channel? Right, poor like, I mean, people. I'm boring as hell. That's what I'm saying. Can you imagine, like, like, just think of this. Like, you pick your nose. That's okay. <laughs> so, like, why do you pick your nose, bro? You catch me at my worst times, like I'm digging my ear or something. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, the and camera tunes in on it. me. Yeah, like, look at him go. It's like the Truman Show <laughs> for everybody. The Truman Show was a trip too. But okay, so my bad. Keep going. You get us back on topic. All right, so back on topic. So this week, um, or last Thursday, yes. was the release of Ready Player One. Ooh. And Ready Player One, by all means, <clears throat> I- I'm going to say this. And we, we kind of had a pre-conversation about this the other day. If I did not read the book, that movie gets an A+. 100%. If I did not read the book, the movie gets an A+. Right, I, and because it had everything in it. it, it had every. If you're a nerd, if if you're a nerd that loves to see references to other Easter games, eggs. <laughs> um, Easter eggs, like you said, uh, even they had, and then they implemented so many different genres of games. You got to see uh, the. I don't know if you've seen the Halo troops. You seen the uh-huh. Ninja Turtles? People were the Ninja Turtles. Battle Toads. The Gundam was the best yeah. part of the movie. In my opinion. spoilers, yeah, we're spoiling. I, man, at this point, if you ain't seen it, go. I'm pretty sure you've seen something on Twitter. About okay, it. So, so we're gonna just spoil it. Let's spoil yeah, we, it. We Let's spoil really get it. into it. Okay, dang, the movie about to be out for a week. Jesus, go watch the movie. Can we, but anyway, oh, go ahead. Gundam, the Gundam part was my favorite part because I was not expecting that. I am not gonna lie, and I tell you that that's when the movie is cat captured me if it's some shit in the movie that I, it just takes a left field i was not expecting a gundam to pop out and um and 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 that was a small thing because i'm pretty sure somebody would have you know said it i love the gundam part but not only that the movie did a great job with the characters and which turning it into something that uh can hold your attention like especially if you're watching the movie and you hadn't read the book it is it is like a, a, a edge of the seat type of movie because you don't want to miss any detail in the movie. So, on my opinion, if I did not read the book, and we'll we'll have after you give your point, we'll talk about the book and the movie at the same time. Got you. Um, if I did not read the book, the movie gets an A plus. But we'll we'll talk about the next part. So, what do you think about Ready Player One? Okay, so I thought Ready Player One was an amazing movie, and I feel the exact same way as you that. I envy people who haven't read the book mm, yeah. and that get to watch the movie and then will read the book because it'll they'll they'll be able to just like I appreciated it. I loved it. I damn near cried. I was sitting there tapping my wife the entire movie like in the book. Th- this was that that and then actually that was a major point, too, that they did a lot of nods to the book. And I OK, people. Book movie. uh books to movies you have to understand that movies are only two hours um a book could be the lot the span of years months days whatever a but century long a, a century long you only have 
two hours, maybe three max to get the whole book across. Um, I'm just happy they didn't try to make a bunch of money and make a part two or um, which now that I think about it, what I have wanted that just so they can get a little more of the of the story. But it they didn't try to money grab. They didn't try to take advantage of us as fans. They did a good job. This taking was for the two, culture. This was for the culture. They did two hours, Steven Spielberg, two hours, and put together an amazing movie that I wish I wouldn't have read the book it was based on first. But so now, and then I'm going to jump into what you were talking about, comparing the movie and the book. I mm-hmm. like super spoilers. I like the fact that they made a nod to all the challenges. So the first challenge in the book was on the the high school planet. I forgot the name of it that Parcival was on. Parcival is the main character. This yeah. is actually where he meets uh what was her name? Uh not Artemis. Yeah, her name was Artemis. Was it? Artemis, yeah. yeah, Artemis. Yeah. Uh and it's funny cuz we got another Artemis we got to talk about later. Mm-hmm. Um so that's right after this. That's right after this. So um Parcival and Artemis and H they all are on this high school planet, and that's actually even where you meet Irock. Irock isn't a main villain. He does cause problems in the book, yeah. but he was nothing like he was in the... Um, he still gets them. He snitches and all that, but my bad. Now, now that you mention it, I think the the switch to that villain, because it, not, now we're talking about the book and the movie, correct? Yes. All right, so in the book... I rock was like the guy that he was like the fuck up, like in a sense, like the rich douchebag, you know, pretty much in the movie. They turned him into a full blown villain Mm -hmm. and his character was like, like, like he was still like the sneaky, like kind of, he was kind of like not all the way. He was like a, a, a comedic villain in a sense. He and he reminded me more of an anti-hero. Um mm-hmm. he reminded me of somebody just out there making money any way possible and he was just a badass at the video game. But I yeah. didn't I didn't get evil from him. Even though he did some evil stuff, but he just no, he, he just he felt like a troll, like somebody yeah, who's he, just good he, at the game. He wasn't evil. He just yeah, like remember he said like, "Yo, you can't do I got ten years. Worth yeah, of he stuff. was like, "Oh, that's a new move." He was he like, said, I, got, "I got ten years worth of stuff in me." <laughs> and remember when he died? Oh, all that stuff, stuff just fell out. Down, oh which, my which gosh! The holy, um, the holy grail hand grenade. Yeah. So, uh, I think when I when I like I said, his character was intriguing to me because that was a switch that I was okay with. Yeah, from the book. You know what I'm saying? Now, with me, I, the I didn't, if I had to give it a grade and my grade is probably going to be a C, right? Comparing it to the book. This is just the comparing it because I read the book. Um, In the book, they changed a lot of things and I'm pretty sure it was money reasons why they couldn't do it or, and and time restraints. Like you said, two hour movie compared to a book that's based on 10 years worth of stuff. I mean, we could start off with the main. I don't think it was 10 years, but go ahead. I get your point. Yeah, I mean, it, it probably wasn't. It's probably shorter than that, but I know it was like years. It was in a year's standpoint. Because remember, the first thing, didn't they didn't find the first thing until like some years after the contest started. Yeah. So that's, that's what I mean by Oh, years. okay, but got you, got you, got you. Now, um, in with, with even like the main character, he's described in the book as like a chubby kid that, you know, he, he doesn't really... Um, not he sociable really, at all. Yeah, he's not sociable. He's not talking to nobody. He doesn't have friends. His, I mean, in the, and that was something too. In the book, his best, fr- his only friend, pretty much, was an old lady that used to feed him. Mm-hmm. And he used to stop by his place on his way to school and blah blah. And, and they made a that. nod. They made a nod to her, like that's yeah. the lady he talked to in the movie. They, exactly. they they did a good job of making nods like um like the first challenge the whole challenge in the first the first challenge in the book was to play um joust and then he ended up having to play the second player so he had to switch spots so mm-hmm. in the movie they made a nod to it by going backwards and then you got to remember they um I want to say Steven Spielberg said um 
he couldn't um don't expect to see any of the movies he worked on because a lot of the i want to say a lot of the stuff that was referenced in the book steven spielberg worked on and okay. a lot of those movies you couldn't do like they're like the second challenge was dope in the movie and it was mm-hmm. dope in the book actually yeah. i think it was better in the movie that's the only thing i think the movie did better wait what was, was the, the second, second challenge in they the had book? to do war um war games Remember, they had to act out the whole movie War Games word oh, for yeah, word, okay. like yeah, Guitar yeah. Hero, except they played the actual character. Yeah, I I think the that you're right. The the yeah. contest two in the movie was better than it was. Oh in, yeah, it might. I mean, if I had to, if I had to say, it was. I think it was dope. I really wish they would have put more emphasis on the on. I wish they would have used the scene from the book on how he got the quarter. I think that would have been way doper. That would have been a way to dive in and show emphasis about the games. But see, they couldn't. Because you would have had to show the big separation between him and Artemis. And and this is this is why, like I say, this is why I say, see, it's a gang of stuff in the as in the book as you're reading that you think are major things. Like, oh, this is important. I can't forget this. Like keynotes. If, if if I was supposed to write down all the major stuff in the book, the quarter, how he gets gets the quarter, because everybody knows about Pac-Man and about how Pac-Man splits the screen once you get to the, like, you know, the last part. Everybody knows about it. We've all seen, well, I know I have. I've watched the video of the guy that beat it and, and all of this. So when I, when I see that, I'm like, oh, that sounds dope. But then you, like I said, you go back to thinking about the money situation, getting it clear, this, that, and the third. Okay, how are they going to do it? How can they condense that into a, a form of, you know? And then another part I didn't like was Ogden Morrow was a main he character. He was a major character in the, and they in the didn't book. Even, you know, he they, was all throughout the book. Like after the first challenge, he was all the way through it. Yeah, they exactly. even ended up at his house at the end. They were at his yeah. house. They weren't at. Uh, they weren't in a van moving around. They yeah. were at All a of house. That didn't happen. Yeah, and then remember, it was uh, it was Parsifal who ended up going to the uh, IOI facility. It wasn't Artemis. Yes, it wasn't the. It wasn't Artemis, and that even that was even that was a major thing because he beat the system. Yep, he I he mean, changed his name. He made himself have debt. Exactly, um, and then that's actually when he really got in shape. Remember when he lived on his own because he created a regiment to be better yeah, in the game. And the only way he could get online was if he completed a certain amount, amount of, of running. Exercise yeah. Whatever. So yeah. And all of that shit, you thinking like, Oh, that's important. I can't forget that. And then you come to find out that it's they, only they scrapped it. Yeah, exactly. So what they did with the movie was they condensed it. They had to make it short enough for people to watch it. Like I said, if I didn't read the book, I'm sitting on my edge the whole movie. But as I, I since I read the book, it's a lot of parts I'm seeing and I'm smiling like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they changed it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dope. Oh, yeah, they changed. I'm doing that the whole way. Let me tell you the one thing I was absolutely pissed that wasn't there was the way um the way Halliday did the intro in the book to the game versus how they did it in the movie. In the mm-hmm. book, he was supposed to be this eccentric, over the top freak of nature, jump cuts. I'm I'm Halliday Morrow, bloom, 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 like flipping yeah. out, and all and all the clues were in the video. Yeah. Remember that that was the whole point. But then they, I like I really was expecting that. But I'm gonna tell you, once I seen the trailer for Ready Player One and they didn't show that, I knew it wasn't gonna be in there because mm-hmm. that scene alone could have been the trailer for the movie. Just well, show that us. scene alone is the movie. Ooh, yeah. So that's why I understand. That's why I understand that they don't put that in the in the actual movie because shit, that's the movie right there. What I didn't get is the 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 switch in his his personality, like you said, because he wasn't that type. And then in the in the movie with the whole with him introducing everything, it was. And you know what? As I said, I kind of get it because that was that was a whole intro. That was a whole prelude. Yeah, that gave saying? you the whole show. Like the they gave you the the write up to everything, and yeah. and I just I don't I don't know, man. Like I I was I guess I was just fanboying and looking forward to that. You know, it wasn't. I felt it was truly necessary because it really gave, um, it gave you true insight to who he was. 
Um, but I, but one thing I do know too is we only got two hours, and you got to make it a movie for everybody. So mm-hmm. what do you do? You create the heavy love story. You draw it out. You create the uptick, the slight down, and then the big climax. You know, you gotta, yeah. you have to, st- you have to make a movie. And the love story was mad heavy. It was mad. Yeah, well, it was heavy in the book too. But I think we were just as fan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm fanboying over it. it I was bothered not, at the it fact wasn't, it wasn't that heavy. It wasn't all about the the. Uh, Ozzy Morrow's wife, like a major, a big portion of it was, but the challenges wasn't. Oh yeah, they weren't built. No, they weren't built around around. her. You know what I'm saying? So with me, and I get it. Like proper, I get it, man. I understand. But as like a fan, like as a true fan that read the book, I'm sitting there like, "Eh." but then I'm like, I'm still sitting there intrigued by the story and want to see more. Um, I I think if I could change, if I had the opinion i would i would somehow change uh z's character back to the way he was in the book because in this book in the movie he wasn't he really wasn't how they explained him to be in the book you know what i'm saying talking about parzival yeah parzival but don't they call him like they call him z too yeah 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 but anyway because he character he would have had character growth like they didn't show the growth he went through because he went exactly. from some hardcore geeky kid whose only life was in the, the game, the game, to him transforming into, I guess, a productive member of the society. But no, yeah. I get, I get what you, no, I get what you mean, one hundred percent. There, yeah, there was but, that. Um, it, it, I felt like I felt it was there. Once again, we're talking in comparison book to the book to movie. Not yeah. the movie on its own because the movie on its own is damn near perfect. It was a and great. I will movie. say it again: the movie by itself, in my opinion, is an A plus. Really, don't give movies A plus like that. That movie had everything you would need, and it and it, it sits well with me because it was like a nerd movie. It was like a yeah. horror gaming nerd movie. So, uh, I mean, references to look at look the the uh, the big giant. What what's the actual name for it? Is it the big giant? Oh, the Iron Giant. Iron Giant. Um, they Mecha had the Godzilla. turtles in there. They got Godzilla, Mega Godzilla, Gundam. I was sitting there. They had uh, Tracer from Overwatch was in there. They had every dope. Bro, they had Battletoads. Um, they had uh, Chucky, the Ch- DeLorean, Chucky. Ch- the I'm not 1950s gonna lie. Chucky. Batman. Vehicle. Chucky was that Catwoman. Catwoman. Um, Catwoman with Chucky. That was uh, Akira. Um, mm-hmm. They had no, no. I'm gonna tell you, my... I, I low key want to put this. This is my favorite favorite part, only because of what he did when he was fighting old dude. When he was fighting um, Iraq and hit him with the Hadouken. Oh, and I this... lost it. <laughs> I lost it in the theater. I was like, Yo, did he just do a forward, a back he, forward punch? Like, what the hell? Duking, and then he gave him the flash kick. I yes. Said, no. Yes, that was dope. Hey, and only because I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here laughing. It was like old people in the movie too watching it. Because I'm like, oh, I'm the only person in there making who sad. understood and, what was going yeah. on. Like. So Man. now I'm sitting there like, oh yeah, yeah, dope. That's dope. Did y'all did you just see that? That to me was a great part of the movie because of what it what it referenced to. So, I, I mean, with me, I sit there and I say, um, that uh, if with it, without watching the book, I'm gonna stand by this. I give it an A plus. It facts. I give it damn near perfect because it just yeah. it was so it was dope. It was so fun. Cause I got a overactive imagination, uh, as my wife tells me. So to be able to see for it to look exactly how I thought it would, how I read it, like even the stacks, even the stacks, everything about it looked just like how I picked, how I pictured it when I read it. And that's that if it felt good, I, I felt good. I was like, mm-hmm. damn, even just the description of his van, even him sleeping on top of the uh, the washer and dryer, yeah. even 
even the way he got down from the um, from the stacks, I wish they would have showed. Uh, I wish they would have stretched out the time frame between him and Artemis separating, because there was a lot of dope stuff that went down. Like remember that he went on so like a fast. killing. Yeah, it well it was it yeah. was fast. But remember um, in the book he went on a. Um, People were like trying to rob him and stuff. He had his own like uh, asteroid with a, a hidden asteroid base. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, he and I would love to have seen all of that. But at least they stuck true and had Artemis fil- finish. If I'm not mistaken, Artemis finished the second challenge first. She was the one who figured it out, and then she sent him the message. Um, but they weren't talking. But because he helped her finish the first challenge. She Remember, helped him with the second. Because yeah. she found it first. She found mm-hmm. the challenge first, but she wasn't able to beat it. But he um, he figured it out. That was just... I, it, it was dope. It, I uh, like it. I'm not I gonna loved lie. it. I, I, love I, like, I love the movie. It. The movie to me was great. It's a great watch. Um, your kids can go. Your most, your I'm pretty sure all your kids oh. will be able to identify all the characters. Yeah, because it's here. it was. I like how. Oh, that was another good point. They did a good job of replacing all the copyright stuff they couldn't get. Exactly. They did a great job of replacing it. I mean, using the Shining, that yeah. was dope. That was crazy. As, yeah. I was, I was that the old late that should trip me out. She said, it's an old, it's an old lady zombie lady. Yeah, there was like there was no zombies in The Shining. Like I was just, oh man, that was H, crazy. H's character, they did a great job with H's character. Yep. Um, even though they they turned or uh, her into something else, uh, I thought she was the same in my opinion. But she, I, to me, she wasn't. She she wasn't like a tech fixer upper. She was. In the mo- in the book, she was remember she got all her points and stuff by playing in first person shooters, not fixing stuff, and that's what they kind of made. Like she was the tech guy. She was the she was the tech guy. You want something fixed? Go to her. That's oh. and then it was it was only like one reference to it, and she built the Iron Giant. Yeah, yeah. She, she's like the tech guy at that, that point. Was, that was another major thing too. I didn't mean to cut you off. My bad. But oh, no, go um, ahead. that they weren't friends with uh. Daito and um uh, and what was the little brother's name? Sho? Soto. Soto. Yeah, Shoto. Like they were yeah. not friends with them. They no. were they became friends after the assassination attempt. Yeah. Like they got them together. That's they, what got them together. Remember, they threw a little short thing of that. Mm-hmm. Because remember He sent the message they, out. After they yeah, he sent the message out. He jumped in and sent matches out. That's when he was dragged to the rebellion. And then that's when Og was supposed to really jump in because exactly. he flew them all together. And um, oh, and that was another major part. He didn't, uh, Parsifal didn't see Artemis until the dead end of the book. Yeah. Like, it, until they, he, until he, until he I damn near beat the game. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think once he beat it, um, once he finished the last challenge. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not. In the, in the book, he's seen her before he beat that. Remember? It was when they all went to Oggs. Oh, yeah. She yeah. got there early. She got there they, early. They she was, spot. yeah, they but they didn't see each other. Yeah, she was in right. a different you're room right. and a different machine. Yeah, and then, he was asking about her. Yes, and they were all like, yeah. oh, she's over there, but we need you to jump in. Because yeah, remember, yeah, everybody thought right. he was dead. Because mm-hmm. they thought this, uh, that's when in, he changed his name. That's when in he the broke book, into... Did they kiss in the book? Yeah. Yeah. They did? From what I remember. Oh. I don't remember that part. Mm-hmm. But anyway, anyway, it's still to me, it still was a great watch. Hell yeah. If you have a if you have time, a little extra cast, go watch that movie. You will not be disappointed in my opinion. I low key might go watch it again. I got some free movie passes. I um, know, right? I might have to do that. But yes. but yes, one hundred percent hands down. Great movie. Now, movie. rolling over into another more reading Artemis. material and with another yeah. Artemis. So we kind of, um, I haven't really jumped into comics. I've been reading a lot of manga and watching a lot of anime, but mm-hmm. I haven't taken time with comics for years. I've been out the game for a long time. Um, I would I would keep up with like different YouTube videos. And, Shout out Tone Deaf. Oh, Tone Deaf Radio, man. He, he put his back on track and... He gave us a dope recommendation to jump back into the whole rebirth of DC. And mm-hmm. he was like, check out Red Hood and the Outlaws. 
Um, now we took it upon ourselves to kind of not necessarily a challenge, but more so just like, Hey, let's read this. And that's kind of what we'll do. We'll jump into series, read it, come back and talk with you guys and then do our own little videos on our respective channels and whatnot. Well, we've been reading red hood and the outlaws, uh, which the outlaws consist of bizarro, um, a Superman clone Artemis. Uh, she is an Amazon from a different, uh, not from Action, th- pretty much. Uh, yeah, not from uh Themyscira. Uh I feel like I butchered the name. I can't believe I said that. Yeah. Um, but I forgot where exactly where she's from, but she's under a different god. I want to say she's under Ra's protection. Yeah, it's Ra. Yeah, she's under Ra's protection. Right. I forgot the name of their city. But she is an Amazon. Um and then oh, Jason Todd. You got the uh the Red Hood, of course, who was murdered by the Joker. Um and put back in put brought back to life through the Lazarus Pit by Talia yep. Al Ghul. Now I love the fact that they didn't touch on that. In they just showed it. They just kind of showed it. Eventually it, they touched on it and went into detail. Yeah. But for the first like ten uh ten issues, they you had to be paying attention to the artwork to see what happened and how he came back to life. And reading the flashbacks, that's uh-huh. when he mentioned it. The flashbacks told a lot, and uh, once you once you actually read the flashbacks, like actually pay attention to them, um, they go off tangent sometimes. So sometimes they'll be like oh, off tangent, and then he'll have to snap back into his character and continue his conversation with like Artemis or Bizarro. But yeah, continue. My bad. Okay, so I'm just I know I'm giving a terrible introduction to it, but all in all, I I can't believe I don't have the authors to give the give them their propers on all of it and the artists, but. Well, we're not well, done with it. Are no, 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 it? no. Hell no, yeah, I'm okay. not done. Oh, yeah. We, um, we, and it's not that many issues. I want to say it's only 18, uh, 18, 18 yeah. issues. And I'm on like issue 13. But so far, I didn't realize how much of an emotional roller coaster this was going to be. Um, to, to see everybody's backstory and to see how drastic everybody's lives were up to that point and to to see Jason Todd or red hood get over what happened with him and the Joker, uh, Mm -hmm. how the Joker killed him. And then to even see him become friends with bizarro to see him become friends, uh, and a little more with Artemis. It just the way it all played out was really dope. And even him and infiltrating, or at least he thought he was infiltrating, uh, black skull or, uh, black mask. mask. Like it, Mm -hmm. it just, it was super it was very well written or it is well written and it's it's got me like hooked and then yeah. to see how they uh how they showed the world through bizarro's eyes that yeah, that was colorful. that was dope cuz mad colorful cuz bizarro's only i think within the world up to this point i want to say he's maybe a month or two old like he's not yeah. that old at all um he considers his birth, even though he has the memories of Superman, he considers his birth the day he was broken out of his container. Yeah. He called it the womb. Yeah, the womb. The um womb. it all in all, the action is dope. The story is dope. Um I'm the 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 way they show loss is dope as shit. Like even just seeing how um how Artemis's lover or Artemis's friend, how she died. Yeah. Super spoilers. We're going to, yeah, we're spoiling the shit out of this. Um, oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're team spoilers, team spoilers. Okay, um, and just, just seeing that scene, there were so many little scenes like that. Whole, all those panels where Bizarro flew her up to space so that she wouldn't go supernova and destroy earth. Like mm. that scene was so damn dope. And or when they got drunk at the bar and she was giving her backstory, uh, Artemis was giving her backstory or, Oh, did you catch the reference to, um, to, uh, what was it? To kill a mockingbird. Um, what was that damn book where old boy had to shoot his friend who was slow? Was it to kill a mockingbird? I don't know. Correct me in the comments to see. I can't think catching the ride. I never, yeah, I, I I skipped that book. Uh, that that book the report. the one mandatory book in in mm-hmm. the world. Um, but he 
how they made reference to that when uh, Jason was going to kill Bizarro when he had him out in the flowers by the lake. He was getting ready to kill him, and it, the way how yeah. colorful it was, and then just hearing Bizarro talk. They they did a real good job of giving everybody in the. It's only eighteen issues. All I read was thirteen issues so far, and I felt like I know everything about everybody. What what's so amazing with me today? I think uh, the Red Hood, this that Robin, or you know, I'm a that Robin, Jason Todd, is not, is is probably my favorite DC character because of his his dislike to not want to be like Batman, but his obsession with not trying to go too far from Batman. So it's like he'll talk shit about him, but when he leave, he'll be talking. <laughs> Again. You, I want to. I want to hear he kinda, your opinion once you read it, Tim Drake. When you get on Tim Drake and Nightwing, but we'll keep going. Tim, but I, I thought the same thing too, because Tim Drake is the Robin that got beat the shit out of. No, by, that so this who, Jason Todd is the one who got beat the shit out of with the crowbar. Red Red Hood. Oh, no, no, no. Didn't he wait? Tim Drake was the one that was turned into the Joker. Not that I remember. I could have swore he was the one that he uh, was the Robin. We'll look that up. But whatever Robin was the one that got turned into the Joker who hated Batman, who turned her up to hate Batman. We all seen them. Um, he was the one. He was my favorite Robin at first. But what makes this guy so what makes Jason Todd so 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 dope to me is his his character development as we read the the uh Oh shit, the you were right. That's my fault. Don't yeah, so you're right. As keep we, going. As we read the as we read about Jason Todd through these the Red Hood and the Outlaws, um, the rebirth, this 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 what do you call them? What would you call this series of of, uh, of comic books? His character, he he talks about how he doesn't want to do it Batman's way, but he always finds the way to do it Batman's way. Yeah, he, and every he situation. Always, and he always references it too within his head. Like, exactly. He, he, he always... just talked about the Bizarro situation, right? Mm-hmm. All right. So we all know Batman, and he says it. I may not be the, you know, the 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 strongest or the the smartest in the room, but I'm the well prepared. I'm the I'm... most prepared. He he for him to go back and get that kryptonite bullet for Bizarro, I was like. Yo, he Batman. This yeah. dude is Batman. He, he just don't want to be called or he be. He just Batman. don't want to be Batman, and he wants to shoot guns. Like, yeah, and Bat and Bat. That's why I like him so much because Batman is so dope to me as a character because he he always got the perfect thing to say. He 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 can never lose. <laughs> I don't see him losing because he's always prepared. The funniest meme, the two funniest memes I've seen for Batman is you see the Flash. Um, what was it? The Flash, Superman, and like Sonic, they were lined up for a race, and then you see Batman line up next to him, and he's like, "I am Batman!" Like <laughs> they're all looking at him like he's crazy, and he's like, "I am yeah. Batman!" And in my heart, I was like, "He gonna give him a good race!" Like, <laughs> like his... for some for some reason, I believed seeing that meme. I was like, "Batman's gonna win!" Mm-hmm. Like Batman's gonna win that race somehow. Man, they in the even in the cartoons they made Batman to be this like I forgot who he was fighting. He was fighting somebody in a different universe. And he, the dude had to give him respect because he was willing to blow up the Dark universe. Side. I, yeah, okay. Was he was gonna side. blow he was gonna blow up Apocalypse. Yeah, and he was like, you know what? I give you because the other guy would have done he said it. superman diana none of them he was like nobody else would have did this yeah he was like it would be what... the human to save the universe like no, yeah listen, that was I, I remember that when i this is when batman became my favorite character when i was watching the cartoons and this fool said he they looked at him was like you have uh you have ways to defeat us all when they got back and basically and i had to de- i had to defend him to people he oh, you're talking about like the dooms? Plans. Yeah, for everybody. He got contingency plans for everybody. Including himself. Anybody can get it. <laughs> Including said, oh, himself. Oh, you Wonder Woman? I got something for that. Oh, you Superman? I got something for that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And, and how? Go ahead. No, nah, I was getting, I forget the, I, I, I'm so mad I forget most of these characters because it's been about Marvel for the past like 10 years. Right. Um, with, even with Batman. When he um, this is the cartoon I'm still referencing. 
I forget the other. He was like a dude that was like Flash, and he had the he had he they wanted him to like vibrate real fast so they could like open a portal, and he didn't have Flash do it. He had the other guy doing it because he knew the guy was gonna. I said, "Yo, Batman is awesome. He's a goon, bro. He, I, I love that. At the end of the day, he is a man." Yeah, and I, I think. See, see look, look at this. We're talking about goddamn Batman. We're supposed to be talking about the outlaws. <laughs> oh yeah, look, damn, we went off on a full, and and uh, I part. Let let's be real. Um, it's always been weird. Like, what was Batman's infatuation with young boys, young orphans? But I'm not gonna go Ooh. there. Um, okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, you know, Neverland Ranch just with less lights. Jesus <laughs> and physical training. Oh, uh, it's, it's never because he was an orphan. <laughs> point in time, right? Nope. <laughs> you know, there's a there's a universe where um him and Clark Kent been friends since they were kids. Oh really? Uh huh. That that's only right. There was that's a only... it was a I don't know if it was Injustice uh but I forgot which run it was but like Batman's car or it was fan fiction I don't remember but his car broke down where Clark Kent was playing baseball on the field. Uh, with some with another boy and um and Bruce like they invited him to go play while uh while um I can't believe I forgot the damn butler's name um went to, was fixing the car and they became like lifelong Alfred friends. Alfred thank you became lifelong friends but but back to the outlaws I love the art I love the artwork man Mm -hmm. and then i love all the little hidden hidden themes hidden in the pictures in the uh images even um especially the drunk scene when they're uh they're going to order their drink and they're at the bar full of bad guys uh and you just kind of see it it was just i just think it's dope as shit man they did a damn good job or even bizarro telling the history his history Mm-hmm. Like how they drew it, like Chibi, all little cartoon characters. They all look like babies. Yeah. Uh, they, all, they all look like the Teen Titans. Uh, yeah, it looked like Teen Titans Go, <laughs> like the little baby version. Yeah, it was. It, it's the this. They did such a good job with the character development in yeah. this, and we always talk about character development. But the, I mean, these are obviously characters that have gone before. But if you are somebody that never knew about. Never knew about Artemis. Never knew about Bizarro. You this see, is a great place to start. You can pick these up, read them, and you will get like the full backstory, like history, like you know, you get to understand these characters from a standpoint that you probably wouldn't have gotten to if you never were introduced to them the first time they were being introduced into the universe. So, with me, um, no, that's what I want to point on too. We talk. Remember, we talked about like uh, we were each other how many we said like yo how many bizarros do you think that there were yeah all right so he i, I said that they had to have been millions and there or that's kind of being over exaggerating but they had to have been a ton a shit ton of them because if they were trying to if this if cloning um kryptonian cells was so difficult they had to so be a bunch daring, of different bizarros yeah, and he said, and he didn't make like six billion or six million dollars he had to put into the project before he scrapped it. That oh, yeah, Luthor, when they flashed back to Lex Luthor <clears throat> and Lex that, Luthor, man, his infatuation with Superman has always been so but DC does that, yeah, DC does that. They the villain is always super intrigued with their arch nemesis because he's like polar just, opposite it's like a, after so after a certain amount of time it's just an ego trip yeah like it, like i like come on now you know how many times the joker could have just all right man you win dog it's over okay <laughs> and so so let's let's jump on that did you ever play um arkham knight uh i started it never finished never it. finished it okay if I'm not, let me let me double check. But with Ar- one of the Arkham games, I want to say it was Arkham City or Arkham Knight. Um, Batman, what? at the end, he ended up saving. Um, oh, no, it wasn't Arkham Knight. It was Arkham. 
Let me make sure I got it right. I don't want to give anybody bad info. Is it asylum? Nah, it wasn't Asylum. Uh, it was Arkham City. So at the end of Batman Arkham City, your girl gets like hurt and injured, but I don't think she died, or maybe she did die. But you, instead of taking her body, you end up taking the Joker's body and flying off, and that's how the game ended. Like, and that... I don't know. I felt like nobody ever pointed that out. And may, hopefully you guys can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Anybody who's played the game, please tell me. I I swear it threw me off. I'm like, you went in there to save the love of your life. But you walked out with the Joker in arms and like flew away. It was so Batman. Like that's, that's why their loves of their lives. Are. Yeah. They have to die in these comic books because they, they yo. She wouldn't want me to to become you type yeah. deal. So I'm gonna do the right thing, even though you died. I'm gonna do the right thing, and I'm gonna take you to jail because you killed her. But I'm just gonna take you to <laughs> like that. To me, <clears throat> when I when I see villains do things like that, and this is kind of why watching um, the Red Hood, like when he let when he let old dude die. Or not, he didn't let him die. When he let old dude succumb to the sickness, mm-hmm, lose his mind. Basically, a vegetable. Um, that was like some okay. I I don't see Batman doing that type of shit. But he he was following the rules. <laughs> I didn't do it. I you didn't did. Kill, you did it to yourself. <laughs> exactly. That, that was pretty. That was pretty badass. Yeah. So when I see stuff like when I see him do stuff like that, I can see the the difference, the small subtle differences between him and Batman or team Red Hood and the Bat and Batman. But I also understand, yo, he grew up under him. He grew up yeah. learning the ways of the Bat and, you know, to go against that. This is why you don't go against it because you this, that, and third. What Whatever was, you wanna What was really dope was the um was that moment between like right after they met Bizarro and uh and Jason met up with Bruce, met up with Batman, and they met outside of Gotham. And he asked him, like, you know, I know you're like all big on uh, on being a law abiding person. And Batman's mm-hmm. all laughing at him, like, yeah, you la- think I, you, you think I follow the rules? I I beat people up and I break and in there. Yeah, I, I break and enter all day. Like, what do you think this is? Like, you think I'm following the rules? None of what mm-hmm. I do is following the rules. I bypass laws. That's um, just Batman with his every with his answer for everything type. Man. Yeah, he said, I said f him. I was like, damn. And but it He's was like, just that you know what I mean. <laughs> that whole moment. And he was like, we have enough heroes. We have enough Batman. We have enough Superman. We have enough Wonder Woman maybe we need some outlaws like that yeah. shit was dope he he gave him free reign he was like do your thing but remember they even they mentioned it that this is how you nightwing and uh was it was it batwoman wait not was it back no it wasn't batgirl what are you talking was about was it batwoman what are you talking about batgirl all right is it no what in you... i think it was i think it's like uh Series he doesn't mention Barbara Gordon. Bar- Barbara Gordon. No, remember they mentioned the other crew. They had Clayface. They had Nightwing. They had uh, the Orphan. They had. Um... You don't remember that part? Uh-uh. All right. So there's a. a, a I want to say it's either it's either a comic eleven. Oh, you're 12. talking about when he was like, "Why don't we just kill like." Why when he was a young kid and he was talking about his back background with. Uh, coming up under Batman. You talking about that no, one? No, 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 no. They okay, so Bizarro or do you do you know the part where Lex Luthor fixes Yeah. Okay, so after Lex Luthor fixes Bizarro and he builds the thing up in space that's camouflaged as like a building, their their hideout, their secret hideout. He builds this place. It's like a secret hideout that's and Bizarro's smart now. He's intelligent. So he's Oh, he's, I don't think I got that far. Oh, okay. I ruined it for you. All right, I'm, let me. Yeah, I was like, I was like, what the hell are you talking about? All right, so Bizarro, Lex Luthor fixes Bizarro, but it's a temporary fix. And what happens is he, he, his, he's, he mentally he's getting smarter every day, right? 
So he's going from like an IQ, a IQ of like, I think he, they said like seven to like an IQ of 700. And he continue every day he's getting smarter. But Bizarro knows that, excuse me, this is only temporary. He's going to revert back to his old self. He doesn't want that to happen. So he's putting together what it seems like so far. He's putting together a lot of contingency plans for that. So he built like a, like a, he built like his own Jarvis for his okay. suit. And he built like one that, that, uh, let them, that alert them to some type of crime before the crime happens type deal. He built a room, a room that could take them anywhere. All they got to do is open the door and walk. And it'll take them anywhere that they want to go. He built this all this crazy stuff. Well, they run into I don't know the name of the group, and I'm pretty sure they referenced it in there, but Nightwing, Batwoman, Orphan, had a, another guy, I forget his name, and they had Clayface. They they were a team of like superheroes that were here, you know, vigilantes here to stop crime. And three nights after Bizarro fixes everything, comes up with the new program. They don't have crime for three nights, so something gets weirded out. Well, Bizarro sends them a message, and he goes, yo, um, you're not needed anymore. Basically, we, we got this. And they get upset, and they, they Clay, they use a machine that they used to, they used to keep uh, Clayface, in, Clayface in check. Well, they use that on Bizarro. And Bizarro knows he can get out of it, but he doesn't. So as they they hold him, Artemis and Red Hood go after them to catch him, and they get beat. The, they beat their ass up. They send them to um, the Suicide Squad. This is how they meet up with the Suicide Squad. I'm gonna stop right there. But okay. that this is that's next to come where, from where you're at. Okay. So the, I, I was gonna discuss w- with the whole. Yeah, no, you could stop and, now. Spoiler. But the why I bring that up is because in that part where they run into this group, um, Nightwing references he knows of the he knows of Red Hood, and they know each other. But he references that yo, um, why is Batman pretty much letting them do their thing? Everybody sees them that they're outlaws, villains, but they're not. He just doesn't understand why Batman is letting this go. So. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It gets doper and doper as we as we as I see. That's what I'm talking about. Finish it up. So I got five more issues to go. So, um, oh, this is man. Yeah, I love it, bro. I I absolutely love it. So, um, there was a question that was raised, um, speaking on beating up people and whatnot and comic books. Do henchmen have medical plans? <laughs> Like we, we really, we really have to ask this because it seems like everybody is just eager to be a henchman. Like Mm -hmm. I, okay. So I get the whole making money, having power and whatnot, but what happens when Batman jumps out the shadows and kicks your teeth out? Like, are you just toothless? Or mm. you come out the pocket cash? Do y'all got a dentist on staff? Like, do you got a whole medical crew just f- for healing superhero wounds? Like, what? Hey, you know what? When these people go to jail, they do get the medical plan. They got to get fixed. <laughs> they do get the medical. So if I was a tax paying citizen and got them, yeah, but but what you gonna do? <laughs> What you going what you going to write a write a complaint to Superman and the Justice League of America hey, or just man, Justice you League period? Light it, dog. Stop breaking bones. Like can sir, can you please just round them up and not beat them up? Like yeah, man, thank they you. they raising taxes on this again. <laughs> I'm actually shocked that that's something that doesn't happen on a regular basis like a mm-hmm. uh, um like a committee meeting but it's against uh but it's with the Justice League or uh, or with whoever, and they're all sitting down, and people come up and complain. Like, so I, you threw when you threw that car, uh, when you hit, when dark <laughs> when you dodged Dark Side's uh Omega Blast, it actually went into my yard, and now I have a giant crater in my yard. So who's gonna fix it? <laughs> and like you fill out a formal complaint, and they all vote on who's gonna fix it, and then they send out one of the younger members of the Justice League. To go out and fix your yard, like that's their initiation. <laughs> they got a whole crew specified for this. Actually, they made a show about it. About this, it was like a um, I forgot which superhero's uh family member it was, but they don't have powers, 
and they mm-hmm. created like a um I swear it was a show um they have like insurance it's like an insurance agency about filing claims and stuff for superhero damage uh I forgot the name of it uh um, now that you think about it think about think about um <coughs> excuse me think you. about age of Ultron think about the damage he lift the whole city up yep yep yo does does my insurance cover killer yeah, robots? <laughs> like, does my insurance cover my whole town and the ground that was under it being destroyed? And, and you know what? Insurance companies probably went out of right. I think they went out of business once New York got attacked in the first yeah. uh, the said, first oh, divisions. Like, look at all these. Co- you know what? Hey, bankruptcy. <laughs> yeah, everybody just throw it all in. Throw it all in. That's I, crazy. No, nah, but you know, it's funny stuff like that that makes for good material. Like the, no, those little, those small thoughts. Like I would love to see a whole series through the eyes of a henchman. Like I just like how Gotham, be, like how Gotham with uh, with uh, Jim Gordon. I think that is the that's been the best. What you know? I haven't seen Gotham, bro. It, you know what it'll do? It'll make you mad that they haven't made a, a live action straight Batman TV show. Okay. It'll just make you mad because it's that good. And it's like Batman Bruce Wayne's in it as a kid and he does a good job of showing his story all the way up. Mm-hmm. Um like at right now, I think they're at the point where he's actually practicing vi- being a vigilante. Um mm-hmm. it's not the same universe. It it has a couple twists and turns, but it shows a lot oh. of good origins for a lot of the major villains and um a lot of major characters. So okay. I recommend it. Uh, Gotham is a, a lot of it's on Netflix right now too. I think like yeah. the first three or four seasons are. I think uh, I bought season one. It's just sitting in the case down there in the movie stack. It's but, uh, it's dope. More than worth it. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta watch it. I've, I've been meaning to watch that. I've been Flash. DC Ooh. just hasn't been popping like. Well, no, see, ah, man, we really are running short on time, but I'm. Yeah, we Bre- are. It's Let just, me tell you this: DC TV shows, live action TV shows, do not sleep on them. Mm-hmm. Arrow, Flash, it's just, it's just TV, do like, not sleep I don't on watch them. TV like that. I promise you, you are missing a lot. The Flash, oh, Arrow. The only thing I didn't like about the Arrow is. It's basically he's living Batman's life. Mm. Uh, I'm probably gonna piss some people off with that one, but he even becomes Ra's al Ghul at some point. Oh really? Yeah, like I, I know I've been out the comic game for years, so maybe somebody can school me and tell me where that happened, or is that just for TV? But mm. he beats Ra's and becomes the head of the demon. Like, oh, really? yeah, it it was weird, and then he ends up. Like married to Talia Al Ghul's sister, yeah. Because of course Talia ends up with Batman at some point in one of the universes. But yeah, yeah. So that all of that happens, and he, I'm like, that's Batman. I'm like, what, what, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> like, an arrow in a green suit. Yeah, like why is Batman shooting bow and uh, shooting arrows? But um, that's that's how I feel about it. They you know they, a question I've always had as like. A comic book fan or like even the movie how do they get their mask to be like their eye for their mask to be and be able to see i, I really thought about that when i was when the, the one made me really think about it i was reading the comic and he was talking to himself as robin when the joker mm-hmm. was beating him up and then he took the good he finally decided to shoot robin he was like, I've tried this before, but it's still the same thing or whatever. When Robin looked up at him, he had the pure white. And I was yeah. like, yo, that, that made me think of that again. How the hell do they get their thing to be so white? <laughs> their eye to be so well, white. You know Batman's answer. He He's a billionaire who uh, of course, yeah. created the technology. Well, I, I guess if he's irises. a billionaire, then. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the conversation is there. Yep. Well, everybody, uh, I'm Baron J67. And I am T Jones. The artist formerly known as XT Jones. Jesus, when are you going to stop that? I can't. It's just so that? funny because I know it's just I'm a placeholder. I know I'm the artist, artist formerly known rap. as. I don't rap, I don't draw. The artist for. <laughs> <laughs>
See, see, see how cool it sounds. It rolls off the tongue. It doesn't. It's just it, a lot of words. Just T chumps. And I'm Baron J67. Make sure to subscribe to all our links. Subscribe to our podcast. Sub. We need you guys. Please sub, 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 sub. Like, comment, t- or dislike. Tell us what y'all felt about it. And make sure to sub to our individual channels. Baron J67, XT Jones, or T Jones with the X placeholder. And um, no, what I tell you, dog? Don't be messing up my plug. I'm sorry. All right? You're going to plug me, plug me right. <laughs> All right, man, sign me up. All right, on that note, we are out of here, and peace. Peace out.